Hey, it's happening. It's happening oh, right no. now. Oh, my God. Uh -oh. It's happening. I'm Whoa. not ready. <laughs> hey. Hi. Folks, as you know, my editing issue is still happening. The software that I had on my computer is fucked, so uh, I got some people who are trying to hook me up with some new stuff. And that's why everything is going up raw on YouTube without the intro, unedited. So <laughs> watch what you say. Because we like it raw. Yeah. That's right. It's got to be raw. It's got to be thick, moist. Um, but uh, so we're here once again on a crap from the 80s to once again talk about something that's not very specifically the 80s. It may have started in the 80s. But uh, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting, right? It's, uh, we, we both have interesting, or not really interesting, but I guess cool stories to tell about this particular thing. Plus, I want to talk about <clears throat> the movie itself. It's a documentary, folks, and it's called This Is Guar. Yes. And who better to talk guar <laughs> Uh, then with the biggest Guar fan that I know in my life presently. So there have been others. Yes, and I, fans? and I will. And I will. Well, my competition. <clears throat> big. The, uh, he's a big fan. He's uh, both of them were big fans, and I and I'm sure they still are to this day. I don't know. I haven't talked to them in forever, but we'll get to that. But this girl, who I've known. For 17, 17 years, years uh, I've sort of, I've always known that she's a Guar fan, and she didn't know that I was a fan until a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, I am a casual Guar fan, and we'll talk about that. But I think she is she is far more she is full on bohab. Yeah, you are a <laughs> bohabbed woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't I have girl, yeah. So, um, yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about a little bit of our uh, history with it uh, and, and then talk about this documentary that um, is now out on Shudder. Now, should I be yelling too? Are you just doing this because that's what you do? Or should we both be loud? Yelling? I, I'm just, I'm projecting. <laughs> okay. I'm so I should project. <clears throat> yes. I'll project. Okay, what, where do you want to start? Let's do this. Um, I'm psyched. Okay, well, let's start with your fandom. My fandom? Of what Guar. Was the, what was the first album you ever heard by them? Scum Dog. Okay, Scum Dog. That's pretty common. That was mine, too. I think it must have been... 96? 97 is when I first heard them. What about you? When it was coming out. Mm, okay, because you're older than me. Yes. You're uh, 15 years older than me? <laughs> I'm 25 years old. Okay, I forget. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, what, six years older than you? I'm six years older than you? You're yes. 45? I'm 45. I'm going to be 46. I'm going to be 40. There you go. <laughs> in like a couple of weeks. But, I mean, hey, it's still, you know, it's in the 90s. Yes. When we first heard Guar. I was just before that. But you never got to see them live. Never. Why? Why is that? Um, again, it's well, we'll we'll get to it. But it's it's like, who do I know? Is there an go order to... of things? Because you keep saying we're gonna get to that, but I don't know the the itinerary here. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we'll let me just start with me then. Okay. And then we'll go to you because okay. you're far more. Uh, because I'm brand new to knowing that you're a fan. <laughs> because Chris will sometimes text. Just random things, and it's usually pictures. But the other day, he just sent a text that all I said was "Jizmac the Gusha," <laughs> <laughs> and so I sent back just a picture from The Simpsons, probably. Uh, probably not. And that's that's like a typical interaction. <clears throat> um, but that's when I knew <laughs> that you were in the guar. I think you had mentioned previous that you had seen the documentary and yeah, you yeah, liked yeah. it. But I didn't know if that was, Phenomenal. like, you hearing about them at that point. No, no, no. Okay. So, no, no. so <clears throat> my, my introduction to Guar was, 
this was the early 90s. This was probably 91, 92. I'm going to say 92. Um, and I was at this point, you know, making uh, low budget picture was was already officially a year old at that mm -hmm. point because uh, 91 is when I started low budget pictures. So I was constantly making like dumb, you know, backyard horror comedy movies. And I had a bunch of friends who were a part of LBP, but there were always these fringe people on the outside who weren't really in low budget pictures, but they were my friends, but maybe they weren't really my friends. We hung out here and there, but it wasn't, it wasn't like the group of friends that I had. So I had these like outlier buddies, right? And a couple of them were the Gianellis, the mm. Gianelli brothers. Uh, one in particular, Mike Gianelli. He, so, on occasion we would hang out, right? It was just, it wasn't constantly, but it was on occasion. And this one time, we were down in his basement and we were shooting, like, some shitty horror thing, you know? Uh, with blood and shitty prosthetics and whatnot, and we were just... They were in it or for something, or, or I can't remember why Mike was a part of it, but, and, um, you know, we were talking and we were shooting stuff, and he's like, and he says something like, this, this is reminding me of Guar or something like that, <laughs> you know, and I was probably like, the fuck is Guar, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Guar, what's Guar? <clears throat> and he proceeds to basically tell me all about Guar. And he has the VHS of Phallus in Wonderland. Wonderful. And so I he couldn't find mine. <laughs> and so he shows me this this movie. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm like, this is like trauma. You know, I'm like, what? This is trauma, but like music and, and you know, uh, but, it, but it was far more, um, uh, what got me was the theatricality of it. Like, uh, for me, Guar was sort of, the music was second to what I loved about Guar. And so, after... You know, I see this this VHS. I'm like, well, you know, I got to listen to some of this, you know. And I don't know if it was him or my other friend, Mike Lannerman. Oh, so Mike Gianelli was a drummer, and he had a band called Defile, mm. a metal band. <laughs> um, and so my other buddy, who was sort of a part of LVP, Mike Lannerman, and who later became a Swanky Modes drummer, my ska band drummer, he was a metalhead too, and he knew Guar. Um, so I don't know if it was either Mike who let me listen to the tape of Scum Dog, you know? But I listened to it, and I was like, what? This is crazy. This is ridiculous. This literally is like trauma, but metal, you know? <laughs> it's just like, it's so silly. The idea of them is silly. The, the aliens and barbarians coming to take over the, all of it. it was just so fun and weird and you know obviously uh sick of you was sort of got stuck in my head and uh it was a big deal so and then it was mike who later probably like 94 95 had skull head face the yes. the movie on vhs <laughs> we watched skull head face I was just like, these guys are fucking, this is like, this is awesome, you know? This is really, but again, um, I didn't go and seek out every album. If I was listening to Guar, it was always with either of the two mics, you know? Um, what I loved about them and what I still love about them is the ingenuity and the, the creativity, the costumes the banter and buffoonery on stage, uh, of course, the, the videos and everything, you know, because, like, then, 
you started seeing, you know, Beavis and Butthead and 120 Minutes and things like that. And all of their videos were basically short form movies like they were making, you know, mm -hmm. uh, almost even just clips from the movies turned into videos and whatnot. Um, so that always appealed to me. That was always like, you know, I'd love to see them just to see, just to experience Guar, you know? I knew people who really didn't care for the music, but they loved the stage show and they would go to concerts, hang out, you know, not in the splatter zone <laughs> and just watch the whole thing in fascination. Like this is something to behold. Yeah, I would love that, you know, and you know, to this day, I've never seen Guar in concert. But again, I would I would think it's because either I've never talked talk to Guar, talked about Guar with the fellow homies. Um you know, if a Guar show was around the corner, who was I going to go with? I wasn't going to go alone, you know, so who knows? Uh, that's sort of why I, I never saw a Guar show, but I've always been intrigued. And um, I just love that they they were unapologetically Guar, you know? They just, they were who they were. And... Um, yeah. I wonder how many times I've seen them since I've known you. Let's see, did not know you there, did not know you. Okay, so it's been twice. I feel like I'm missing a ticket stub, but that I can prove. I mean, 2007 and 2010. Um, 2007. Carrie, actually, I think Carrie was with me at both of these, which makes sense. We met also in 2005. Um, let's see, Carrie and I met them in 2010, um, I met them, okay, so here's the dates that I have, Saturday, April 27th, 2002, at Water Street, I mean, they're all at Water Street, yeah, uh, Sunday, November 7th, 2004, I met them at the House of Guitars that day, earlier in the day. Um, Monday, August 13th, 2007. This one is very colored from the juice. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, 8 13, 2007. And then Sunday, October 24th, which is my sister's birthday, 2010, was the last time that I saw them live. And we, we met them again at <clears throat> the House of Guitars earlier that day. Yep, good times. So let me ask you something. Since you've been to the shows, what is the preparation beforehand? Does the venue do anything to sort of prepare for There's what... plastic up okay. everywhere. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, and there's, there's a lot of people who will buy white shirts and, you know, decorate them or whatever, or just have like a white shirt because you get sprayed with all the juice and everything. Um, I never, I never did that. I don't know, I never specifically bought any shirts and I didn't own anything white, I guess. I just always wore black. So I never experienced that. Um, my sister Fawn had a white death piggy shirt that she wore to one of the shows and she had she, had, she got Brocky to sign it before or after the show. Um, I don't know if you recall this. So local station, 90.5 WBER, they would air concerts on the radio, and they would give somebody free tickets to show up, set up the audio equipment, and then retrieve mm. it at the end of the night. Mm. So Fawn got to do that one time. She just got free tickets to a show. And I think that's when she got to, to meet them backstage and get the, the Death Piggy shirt signed. So I actually, I've been searching for the set lists or audio footage or anything from these shows. And I actually found one on YouTube from like Rochester? a week ago. Yeah. yeah. And it was, I think, from the 2007 show. 
So it was cool to listen to that again and be like, I was there and I could, cause I had a friend who, she didn't get into Guar until like 2019, I think. And I, I don't know, part of me, like I feel bad for her. Like you missed out on so much. Um, but, uh, fuck dude, where was I going with this? I completely lost my train of thought. Something about genital mutilation. And Something about genital mutilation, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Oh my god, it totally left my brain. I can't fucking believe that. Concerts. Yep. <laughs> Finding footage. A friend in oh, 2019. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so she was always like, did you ever get to see Immortal Corruptor live? And I'm like, I must have. Like, I fucking love that song, and I, I feel like I must have. But I can't find any... Like, definitive proof. I've found set lists from, like, a couple shows before and a couple after. And it has Immortal Corruptor on there. But I would love to find a set list of the specific shows I was at. I can recall some of the songs. I know I've seen Bile Driver, Womb With You, Jack the War, like, classics like that. Sodom Goko. Yeah. <laughs> now, do they actually have horns? What? Because I know that song has horns. Do they bring horns out? Oh, jeez, I don't remember. Or is it just like pre recorded or it was so a long keyboard ago. or something like that? I, I don't remember. <clears throat> oh, man. Another thing that bums me out about the live shows, when I think about this, I always had, I would bring cameras to concerts all the time, but I never brought one to Guar because it would just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so then one day I was like, why don't I get a, a freaking waterproof camera? It's genius. So I bought a waterproof camera and forgot it before the show. And that was the last show that I went to. And I still have that waterproof camera in a junk drawer. So I see it and I'm like, ah, oh, that's what could have been. But You still could go. <laughs> Imagine the vintage photos that could come out of that waterproof camera. I guess. I I just, it's not the same for me. Just because it's not Dave Brocky? Right. I've tried listening. It's just not the same. I got invited to go a couple months ago at Niagara, and it would have been cool. I enjoyed seeing footage of my friends there and getting all sprayed and everything, um, but the vocals, it's just not the same. Hmm. Sorry. Oh, that's what you like. Yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> that you can't, you know. I know. I wish that I could. I wish I could transfer that love, but I, I've heard songs. See, I like both. I, yeah, I, I, I like both of them, and I think both of them work, you know? You know? The, the, I've never had too much of an issue with transition. Um, this is the only... With anything. This is the only band that I've really felt that way about. Because usually I'll be like, yeah, just go with the flow with what comes next. That's what you got to do. But I don't know. I just, I have such a love of Dave Brocky that it was tough to hear songs that I know his voice for. Heard done by Mike Bishop. You mean Blothar. <laughs> I mean Blothar, <laughs> yes. But, you know, he's. I mean, you know, he's really beefcake. He's I been know, there. I know. Jizmac is always there. I know. Mike Dirks is always yep. there. You know. <laughs> yep, they're all there. I know. But those vocals are something special. So unique. Brocky's voice. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. He's got that sexy. <laughs> mm, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like them both. Um, yeah, and I, you know, before we go into this doc, but I, I, I only knew so much about Guar, you know, and this, this really opened my fucking eyes, you know. I have that too. Would you like to show some camera? <laughs> How do you know they can see it or not? They can 
been around me. <laughs> Do you have any of these? The rock star cards? Yeah. No. I think, you know what? I think a few years ago, I had a few, but it wasn't because I collected them. It was just like shit that was thrown in. Yeah, I don't know. Packages and stuff. And just like, oh, I okay, these are interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've always just, I've had that for a long time. And I don't really know where it came from. I'm not going to show all of these. Why? What's wrong with that? I, it's hilarious. All That's right. Guar, man. Yeah, that I'm not gonna. Well, who? You know. Yeah. So I have. Now, some, where were these? House of Guitars. Oh, okay. And uh, Mark's Texas Hots after the show. Carrie was at that show. I don't have. Carrie has a picture of us after one of the Guar shows, at Mark's Texas Hots. There was. Um, like six of us in the booth and we had someone there take a picture of us and it looked like the most demented version of like the last supper it it was great i wish that i had talked to carrie to try and get a copy of it so i'll show off some some photos actually my favorite photo <laughs> yeah. all right let me i only have on my phone i don't know why I can't, right, let's see, there's my favorite photo of me and Brocky, and let's see, got that one, this is 21 year old Nicole, oh come on, you were 14, oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't put that on record though, um, alright, this is, me after a guar shell stained up. <clears throat> this is at the House of Guitars. We had Beefcake Flattis Odorous. There's my friend Tootie. And back to the beginning. Ugh. So while I'm up, I Tripped think I've got here. a couple of other. Yes. I meant to wear, I just got this from Carrie, this Guar apron. I meant to wear it and I forgot. And what else do I got? I got this watercolor painting from a friend of mine. We bonded over Guar. She made that for me. And she made that painting into a tattoo. Here, I'll look. All right. See. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Yep. So I love Brocky. <laughs> uh, I like the side projects too. The Dave Brocky experience. Oh. Can I continue on? Yeah. Speaking out. All right. Yeah, totally. All right. Speaking of the VHS movies, we've got It's Sleazy. And years ago, <laughs> you used to be able to join this Slave Pit membership club. Maybe I should get up again. So, there's... Oh, come on. There we go. Slave Pit, Richmond, Virginia. So it would come with things like cooking with guar, where you get this uh, fake recipe book here. Pretty fun. I uh, had some coupons. <laughs> and what I think is pretty fun here too is that, where is it? Oh, I swear they had like an AOL. Oh, there it is. Slave club at AOL.com. <laughs> I 
I got my certificate of slavery. So you can pause and read that. Signed by, oh, doomed by Jismac. They left the H out of my name though. Okay, and I got this letter as well. Pretty cool. See, the small price of my soul and $15. <laughs> That's all it was. Okay, and it's a comic from Spring of 99. See, got Gorman there. And a friend of mine told me that you can find these comics online. I don't know what I can show on YouTube. Uh, I mean, yeah. Is this all right? <laughs> Okay, I wasn't sure. I don't want to get you... No, this, is, this channel is not for kids. Okay. So anyway, a friend of mine told me that this particular one is not available online anywhere. So it's, uh, it's cool that I have that. I feel pretty lucky to have gotten in on that. Well, you're, you know, a uh, bohab for life. Bohab for life. You can be a bohab too. I would like to be. Okay. <laughs> can an honorary Guar member dub me a, a bohab like you? <laughs> I'll dub you. Oh. Okay. Oh. Can you feel it? Uh, no. Mm. Okay. There you go. Mm. And it's done. Thank you. Hey. Wow. It's all it took. <laughs> this is great. Oh, man. Oh. I have more, I forgot. Also, with that Slave Pit membership comes the most ill-fitting t-shirt. I don't know if I'm in frame, but uh, I probably yeah, am. You can see the cuttlefish. Yes. So we've got Guar on the back here, the cuttlefish. I mean, it's just, who was this cut for? <laughs> you know? It was terrible. It was like a pajama shirt. I never wore it. Um, and the one thing I got at one of the shows was this guar necklace i never really got anything at the concerts because i was either young and broke and i think this was like 10 bucks so the one time that i had money i was like oh they got a 10 dollar necklace i'll get that or i just wanted to post up front like asap to make sure i was there so i just never bothered with the merch booth hmm. What? That's, uh, that's my fandom of my, my merch here that I have. Well. Well. Yeah, see, she's the fan. I'm the casual fan. You're the... Casual fan. Yeah, you're a casual, yeah, I'm a casual fan. fan. That's all right. Um, I'm sorry you never got to see them live. But I still can. Okay, you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry you never got to see... With Dave Brown. Yes. That's what I meant. <laughs> but yes, I can still see them live. I am shocked that you have never been to a barbecue. Yeah, I know. We... Seems like that is totally like, oh yeah, I've done that. I know, I know, I know. I get it. Um, yep, it has not happened yet. I am going to Guar Bar in May. Um, the tattoo artist who did my odorous tattoo. So you we might met... see Dirks. Yeah, I know. That's what we're the hoping. chef there. That's what we're hoping. <laughs> so uh, I met this tattoo artist on Instagram, and I we just slowly like bonded over our love of so many different things, and then we just got like geeking out about war together. And she's like, my God, if we ever met in real life, we'd be total buzz. And I was like, you should totally do an odorous tattoo. And so we met because of our love of war. And... <clears throat> for her birthday, she wants to go to Guarbar. So in the spring, we're going to go to Guarbar, and I'm very excited. And I hope that they're not on tour so that, that Dirk will be there. So far, yep. nothing's planned. So far, so good. <laughs> wow, you're going to drive eight, nine hours? Mm-hmm. Eight, eight, nine or hours. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a haul. I mean, it'll be like going just to a convention. Guarbar? Yeah, just hang out for the night. <laughs> All right. I mean, you could always make a thing of it and go to like all the 
spots. We'll probably go to Brocky's very, grave. you know, famous and whatnot. Yeah, know. we might. Maybe we will. Mm. Oh. Make a whole weekend. I'll be there with you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, so, you know, uh, that leads to this documentary. Um, and I had heard about the documentary. Uh, and I, I am a uh, unabashed lover of documentaries. Uh, um, now, not just like, <laughs> I'm not going to watch, you know, documentaries about the fucking... Nazis, shit like that. <laughs> I'm saying I love entertainment documentaries. Um, documentaries that uh, in some way would interest me as far as a quote-unquote filmmaker or artist is concerned. Um, and so when I knew this doc was, was on the way, I, this was definitely one that I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta see this because these guys are geniuses, you know? Um, and lo and behold, it ended up on Shudder, mm -hmm. which was pretty awesome. <laughs> a uh, very easy way of being able to see this thing. Yes. And um, I got to say, uh, I loved it. I was really taken by it. Um, so much, so much more info than I thought was going to be in this doc. I mean, this really, like, you know, this goes from <laughs> the beginning <laughs> until the present. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it really is a, a full info dump on what this band is and what it was all about and where it came from. And it, it was really, really well done. And I got to say, you know, it's interesting. This is probably, this will make no sense to a lot of you, but... Um, a documentary was recently made about me and my group of Cohort. idiots um, <laughs> who have been make, helping me make movies for 30 years, for over 30 years. Jesus, it's going to be 32 in February. 32 years. Gross. Um, but making low-budget, no-budget <laughs> comedy <laughs> horror films. And... Uh, uh, a filmmaker from Seattle, Zach Oliveris, put made this documentary about us, felt that there was a story to be told, and he too chronicles sort of my beginning, you know, from my birth in 1977 until the present when he, you know, got done shooting the doc. Um, but I found the Guar doc to be very similar uh, in that it's this ragtag group of people that came together to make this odd art, you know? Mm -hmm. This very specific, unique, odd art that is specific to them. You know, nobody else is out there doing that. And I found that to be, you know, in some ways mirror what we do. Uh, you know, it started with me, and then I got this group of misfits together to make this stupid shit that only we do and there's been know? there's been a lot and some of them have come in and out and yeah it's in. true yeah so I, I it was very you know listen guar is guar they're fucking you know we are nothing to that but i found it to be very like wow kinship you know yeah. a bunch of weird artists coming together to be weird mm -hmm. um and i love that and and i found myself being even more of a fan of Guar after this doc, you know, just like, just the people, just what they stand for, the loyalty, <laughs> you know, um, the fact that they've been so close to quote unquote superstardom and yet, you know, never attained it, mm -hmm. but they're big in their own way, yeah. you know, I mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, you know, I found it touching, uh, far more touching than I thought it would be because, you know, I think stigma-wise, people look at Guar and they think these people are fucking Monsters. deviants and, and terrible human beings and shit like that. A lot of, you know, like I've gotten throughout the years, Chris Siever is this 
<laughs> repugnant human being and you know they don't really know and then you just see it's just a bunch of really smart fucking creative imaginative goofballs putting this stuff together and pushing the limits of you know art and insanity and music and for the love of it yeah man yeah honestly and they've made like a fucking empire out of it you know mm -hmm. guar is fucking guar and that's awesome and that's to be commended and um you know i found it very inspiring and, and just like wow these guys are truly geniuses you know mm -hmm. it, it was awesome uh, and i've watched it uh three times now because i did watch it this morning I watched it this morning as well. That was my second time. My first time was uh, with Carrie and Reed and Joe at your old theater. Huh. huh. So it was nice. It was, it was, I don't know, kind of sentimental. Joe has seen them several times. Like, he got to see them in the 90s. I, my, I, I burn with, like, this furious jealousy. <laughs> Because he's seen them at least a couple times with the Misfits. Oh. And I, I remember those shows happening. And I, like one time I was in New York City, and another time, like, I just I miss these shows, mm. and it still to this day just kind of hurts a little bit. But um, Carrie and I got to see them live together and meet them, and so it was it, when the documentary was coming out. We didn't get to watch it right away because we really wanted to watch it together mm -hmm. because that sentimentality, I guess. Yeah. So it was uh, it was nice. So that was the first time. And I told her <laughs> ahead of time, I said, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I know I'm going to cry. Um, and I did. And I tried to like, I, I was sitting there <laughs> like this, just kind of like slunch, slunch down and and Carrie looked back at me, and I was like, don't look at me. <laughs> when they were talking about Dave Brockie's death, um, I remember how hard I was hit by that. And I remember um, I remember trying to watch his, they did like a Viking funeral for mm, him. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. I, I started to watch it, and it was too hard, and I was crying. I was like, I can't do this, I can't do it. And I still have not seen all that. Um, it took me actually a long time before I could actually like listen to Guar again. Um, I remember the first time after his death, I tried to listen to Live from Mount Fuji, and you know he starts like, "This isn't the fucking rock and roll show. This is a war," and I started crying, just thinking like, "I'll never hear this live again. I'll never hear some dumb Brocky <laughs> intro to a live show." And I just, ugh, I had to put it down for a while. <laughs> Um, when I, I heard like on some dumb fucking radio show on the way to work the morning after that they said Dave Brocky died and like my heart just dropped into my fucking stomach and I texted Carrie like while I'm driving I'm like did you fucking hear um, ugh. so they showed that in the documentary and of course I was crying um, and then again this morning, <laughs> even though I knew, like I'd seen it before and everything, I still was crying again. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I think I finally understand how all those Kurt Cobain fans felt. Like, mm -hmm. I, I just remember thinking, like, they didn't even know this guy. And, you know, why are they this upset? And I... I don't think I was like that level of upset where I would like stand outside his house crying or anything like that. But I remember thinking like, this is the biggest, like one of the biggest musical well, losses. I mean, think about John Lennon and, and, you know, it's always been there. Yeah. Someone has affected people like that. Yeah, I guess. You know, you're John right. Lennon, people fucking lining the streets. Yeah. You know, where he was killed. You know, so everybody has it. Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael. Like, you know, say that. Yep. It's, it's, you know, I can. Everybody can sort of make jokes about that. You know. Yeah. And I certainly did. Not with Dave Brocky, but. No, I know. Kurt Cobain. <laughs> I, you know, I, I just didn't understand it. Um, I 
still don't. <laughs> but that's me. Who cares? You know, yeah. I just was not a fan. I just never understood that whole thing. But um, I understand the uh, something means that much to you, you know, mm -hmm. like Michael Jackson. I cried with Michael Jackson. I could not quite comprehend Michael Jackson dying. You know, mm -hmm. it just didn't seem real to me. <laughs> like, um, yeah, so I, I totally get that. I get it 100%. Um, and, you know, I, I certainly, I remember when Dave Brocky died, but it didn't do anything to me because I wasn't a giant fan. You know what I mean? I was a fan, but I was like, oh, I think I felt like more upset for the huge Guar fans than anything else, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because I, I think I probably at the time was like, oh no, you know, Guar's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. this must mean it's over, you know? But clearly it's, it's not over. No, they have to continue. Um, and you find that out in the doc, you know, clearly hearing all these people talk about how Brocky would say Guar is forever. It, it, you know, people can come and go through Guar and Guar will always be. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that sort of was cool, that, that mentality that like, you know, this is going to live on <laughs> whether we're here or not, you know, yeah. there will always be Guar. And, uh, you know, that's cool. That is cool. Whether you I know. can't listen I'm, to it or not, you know. I'm glad for the, like, the new people who are getting into it, and, and they still can because it's a, it's a current the band and everything yeah yeah i mean i see like i i think of it differently because i because there's so many members that are still there yeah and that it's still guar and as a collective they've all sort of helped build that band to where it is yeah you know? I, I get that and i liked that mike bishop they were like the only one who yeah. could do this is Beef mike Cake bishop is yeah. gonna come back and now be lothar and I thought it was very sweet and moving when they all agreed that with Mike coming back, it would help, help them. To heal. Yes. yes. Yeah, that was very, like, ooh, you know, <laughs> that's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what a bunch of great dudes, you know, like, what a team. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, again, I like that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of loyalty. I love, like, people who come together and just have people's backs. Like, that's just, uh, you know, hearing about the, the fucking gang violent oh thing God. that happened I and, know. like... I didn't know about that. That is insane. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, I would have been fucking shitting my pants in fear with shit like that. Like, but they all sort of just stuck together and he, and he still and went out like, dirks didn't run <laughs> i know like he stayed there man he, he was with him like different <laughs> well yeah yeah i imagine of course that. Shit, yeah you know but how terrifying Oof. you know so they watch were... the movie to get more details about that i think it's also on paramount plus maybe Maybe. But it's on Shudder. Yeah, it's on Shudder. And uh, Your fans really easy to watch. And and listen, I mean, you can also get the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray is very uh, cheap on, on Amazon. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, I thought it was really great. I thought the whole thing was was pretty wild and, and such a kick-ass story. Enough to where I wanted to watch it two more times, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I want to own it. Yeah. Um, I, I just think it's a really great doc about a, a really insane group of mad geniuses uh, who uh, I'm glad are still out there doing what they do. Like, because um, the, the world needs it, you know? And, uh, yeah. And, I, and it made me want to, like, seek out the, the graphic novels and the comics and everything. So I was like, ooh, there's continuing adventures in comic form of of these cretins you know like i was like ooh, i gotta get my hands on that shit um several places where you can get merchandise from them from metal blade from amazon from ebay like it's all over the i watched this dude 
House of Masks. Have you seen this oh, guy? Yeah. His mm -hmm. collection is just like, wow. Yep. Like, I follow him on Instagram. What a, you know, what a collection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine having <laughs> some of that shit. You know, that's wild. Yeah. You know. So, you okay? You gonna? <laughs> you feeling it? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Um, so Don Draculich, who plays their manager, Sleazy P. Martini, he also has his own YouTube channel. Well, it got jacked. Oh, I, saw, oh, that they I think took I heard about that. Do you know why? I didn't really... I would imagine because of all the stuff he, you know, talks about and says and shit like that. I'm sure they were like, this goes against our guidelines or whatever. Um, I, I mean, I know he like still has, I know he still has like a... He would pull up like current events and talk about it. Is that what? It's. A, I think I it's a little bit of everything. It, like... I think it's a little bit of, of real life, uh, satire, buffoonery. You know, it's yeah. I mean, he was fully dressed every yeah, yeah. time. Um, but I think he's he he's on like a different platform. Yes, uh, that uh, you know, where he can speak his mind and mm. do all that stuff. But yeah, and I know that he's he does shows too, conventions and whatnot. Yeah. And will show up in the. He was at um, one of the conventions here a couple of years ago. Oh. That I met. Well, you've seen Sleazy. I haven't actually. Oh, not he's he was never one come of the ones out? that was in and out, and he wasn't active. Wow. The times that I I know of, it's a bummer. Hmm. Nope, I haven't seen him. I think he became a lot more active. I think it was like, I don't know, all the dates of all the members are on line. <laughs> it's you can crazy. Find them. Yeah. yeah. But I think like a year or two after the last time that I saw him live, he got more active, like steadily active again. Well, I guess a lot of them were behind the scenes too. Like, yeah. you know, putting that stuff together. Mm hmm. Being wacko geniuses with the costumes and prosthetics and everything. Yeah, like Matt McGuire was always there, but he was a slave until he was yeah. Bob Borg. <laughs> I mean, Gorman was always there. I would love to have those guys do stuff for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine please, them designing some, some creatures and weird stuff for us. You know? Please get that to that happen. Would be, that would be cool. Some I would just love to have Noir in a movie. Stuff. You know? Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Hire him to play to be the band in a in a film or to take down. Do you have a prom Monday episode Night. of Wellsville Nights? <laughs> because they could be the band <laughs> that plays there. Yeah. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, get on it. Hey man, you, you know, don't tempt me. <laughs> One of these days we're gonna be doing something and Guar's gonna come walk it. <laughs> You're like, well, here they are. They're here for shooting. So, oh, I have another Guar story. Um, there was a picture I had seen forever ago online. And and then I, I thought about it, and I kept trying to find it, and I kept trying to find it. I'm like, what the fuck? So then I thought, I'll find an email address on the Guar website and see if they have it somewhere. So I emailed, like, hey, here's this picture that I'm looking for. Can anybody help me? And then I get this email back within like a day or two, and he said, "Yeah, I know, I know what picture you're talking about, and I, I might have that still. Uh, give me a couple days, and I'll email you back." Dave B. And I was like, "Did Dave Brocky just email?" <laughs> like I thought that they would have somebody handling that sort of thing, yeah, yeah. but I was like, "No, that's fucking Dave Brocky just emailed me." And then he emailed me a couple days later to say I looked everywhere and I couldn't find it. I'm sorry. But maybe someday. <laughs> it was just his head, just his goofy face at the end of a penis. <laughs> it was a great picture. I'll find it someday. <laughs> You'll keep dreaming of that goofy-faced penis. I always do. <laughs> yeah. 
Have you seen that they sell the cuttlefish of Cthulhu? Yeah, I know a couple As people a... who bought them. Oh, yeah? yeah? One of them was like, I bought the biggest <laughs> one they have. <laughs> and the other one was like, eh, I bought the smaller one. That's funny. Yeah. Gotta use it. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's funny, I wonder if Olivia knows of Gore, because <laughs> it seems like <laughs> she's already like halfway there. What did you yeah. call her right now? Put her on speaker. I don't know. She, I was like, what? What's Guar? <laughs> she can fucking go work for them. Putting together that crazy ass shit that she does. Call her yeah. right now and ask her. Well, my phone is. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. Uh, and I don't have her. Oh, I'll be seeing her. Remember. <sighs> Too bad you can't edit this. You can... <laughs> I know. Oh, well. It'll come back, folks, and I'll be able to edit my stuff again. <laughs> um, but that's okay, because you're getting it raw. It's like you're right here with us, talking about Guar, mm -hmm. right? Should we make room for them? While we're here. Sit on the laps. Yep. Mm, Kitty. Delightful. Mother's milk. Yeah. But, um... I'll watch. Don't touch me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch. Just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. All so right. you like the dock. You want the dock. You want to own the dock. Yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was great. I wish that they had had more footage of Brocky. I know. What I'm are you obsessed. About? My goodness. No, I wish that they had just had a little bit more. But they they did talk to like everybody. I mean, they had everybody on there. Yeah. It was great. They even had, um, they had other people. So they had, like, Alex Winter was on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, What's yeah. His Nuts from Empire Records, because Guar was on Empire Records. Ethan Embry, Thomas Lennon. Thomas was Lennon. In it. You know, Thomas Lennon, uh, he shows up on so many documentaries. That dude probably, you know, never mind the fact that all of the state are probably like people we could hang with. Oh, yeah. But Thomas Lennon, I, I, he's on the Ska documentary. He's you know? ever present. I mean, he's talking about his love of fucking Ska and the Mighty Mighty Boss stuff and shit like that. I'm just like, Thomas Lennon, why aren't you in my documentary? <laughs> you know? My God. Like, he's, he seems like a real rad dude. You know? Yeah. I like that yeah. he held his little dog who was like passed out <laughs> yeah. the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's a solid doc, folks. Even if it, listen, if you don't appreciate Guar's music, just watch it. Because, you know, if you have some sort of creative or imaginative bone in your body, just watch this doc because it's, it's insane what these people have done. Mm -hmm. And uh, just really cool. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have seen it. And uh, listen, it, it has stoked my, my fandom even more for Guar. So. I got really warm and fuzzy inside when you had said that, that it made you just want to just dive even deeper. Yeah, because I... That's awesome. Much That's more the of point a, of a documentary. Much more of respect and, and, and interest in the band outside of just my casual fandom, you know? Um, just really cool, so... I hope that happens to you. Other people watching Zero Budget Heroes. Oh, I'm sure people and saying will. like, I gotta find out even more. I uh, only knew about Terror at Blood Fart Lake, but now I need more. Yeah, I would. I would hope that happens. I would hope we'd find new fans too. You know, just yeah. like people who are like, or and people who are like, man, I want to do this. I want to pick up my camera yeah. and just go and like inspire people. Yeah, get my group together and and just make some wacky art. You know, mm -hmm. so you never know. You never do. All right, folks, All that's right. it. This was Nicole. This was me talking about This Is Guar. And um, it's sleazy. <laughs> and it's sleazy. Um, Y'all got some Guar stuff that you don't want anymore. Send it our way. Uh, I'll take it. I sure would love to have the original VHS of Phallus in Wonderland and Skullhead Face. That would be awesome to own again or to see again. I haven't seen either of them since the 90s, so. 
Yeah. Uh, Phallus in Wonderland. Because when I was looking for the, the doc this morning, I just typed in Guar, and Phallus in Wonderland was up there. You can only get it, um, you have to get like a trial to, I don't even know what it was, but it's up there, it's available. But it's also on YouTube. All, all their shit is on YouTube as well. So go watch it on okay, YouTube. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can get a DVD of it on Metal Blade. Oh, probably. So, But I would like to have the VHS. I think that would be fun to have the authentic. We've had the VHSs and I couldn't, that was the only one I could find. I was digging through several different boxes. But I found that one. All right, well. There you go. Thanks, Mike Gianelli. Thanks, Mike Lannerman, for showing me Guar many, many, many moons ago. And uh, thank you <laughs> for loving Dave Brocky so much. <laughs> and Guar, and for being so close minded that you won't listen to them or follow them I... anymore. <laughs> I follow Blothar on Instagram. I still tune in now and then. Uh, when my friends went to see them at Niagara, they they uh, streamed it from the stage. So I got to watch my friends in the front row enjoying the show. And I would tune in and I've given it a chance. It's not a closed mind. I've given now, it a chance. Now, let me ask just... you this. If, if Guar was coming back and I said, now's your time, Nicole. Yeah, if you want to Let's go see all go. Guar, yeah, I'll go. You would go? I'll go. And you would you would help break my live Guar cherry? Yes. So, fun fact, the reason I did not go on October 22nd to Niagara Falls, you know why I would have turned down a show on that day? Are we doing a movie? You were going to have a Halloween party. Oh. And then you canceled it. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. Was it this October? Yes. Oh. A couple months ago. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. Come on. Guar is far more, <laughs> like, entertaining than a Chris Seaver Halloween party. It is. <laughs> I was into the Halloween party. I wanted to go. And then you were like, eh. Uh, sorry. <laughs> well, it would have been like you and me. And Carrie. <laughs> Was Carrie? Oh, no, no, Carrie wasn't going to go. Wedding. Yeah, the wedding. So. Yeah. Okay. Everyone kept bailing. Idiots. You know? Like they did for the Christmas. At least we had a nice little group for Christmas. That was nice and cozy. Yeah. Where were all these people at Christmas? I don't know. Where, were we, where was Guar? Yeah. <laughs> Why weren't they what in the my living room? <laughs> you know? Fa la 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 la, man. All right. That was it. Thanks, guys. Let us know. I'm sure we're, I'm going to get a lot of comments. Well, I'm a Guar fan, so speak up. Talk about it. And why have you not before now? <laughs> what the hell? Maybe you didn't know. Well, you should have you know. known. You should have known. There you go. So check out This Is Guar on Shudder. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you on another episode of The Crypt of the 80s. And uh, thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Guar. Thanks, uh, everybody. There you go. Thanks, Chris Seaver. Scum dogs. Yep. Bohabs. All of them. Dave Rocky. <laughs> See me, me, me. <laughs>